Free Media. I'm Robbie Suave, and today I'm joined by Amber Duke. Amber, what's going on? Hey, Robbie. Well, liberals have themselves in knots over the possibility of another Trump term, but HBO host Bill Maher has a message for them. Chill the F out. Lots of terrible things, and Trump could do this, and democracy, and blah, 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 nuclear war. But for the moment, you know, when I'm sitting at a dinner with people, and they're like, oh, well, the world's ending. I'm, Look around you, you fucking <laughs> dumbass. We're, we're at this fucking awesome restaurant. They're bringing you this food. It's probably going to, this dinner's going to cost $700. You're not even going to fucking blink and yeah. hang the check. Shut the fuck up uh, yeah. about how terrible th things is. When they're going to, I'm not going to lose my nervous system about Trump again. If he ends the world, he's going to end the world. Oh. I'm not going to go nuts again if he wins another term. I just can't. I, I, I hope you you uh, have that wherewithal. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? Just, I don't just know. Get into... I'm trying to stay right there. Yes. I'm trying to stay what, right you can there. Get anxious like a millennial? No. Yeah, it's good, right. Exactly. Know. That, that, that uh, is... I mean, uh, that, that generation, especially the Z generation... Ugh. Or... <laughs> <laughs> Kudos to our video editor for cleaning that up so that we could actually play it. Uh, but, you know, what do you make of this? It sounds like some of the people who had uh, Trump derangement syndrome the first time around um, have figured out that, you know what, it's kind of, you know, there are things you can dislike about Trump. There's policies you can dislike. Things haven't been exactly a picnic under Joe Biden either, I would argue. But it's not some world-ending global catastrophe, right? Well, yeah, I mean, you have now two terms to contrast. You have Trump's first term and Biden's first term. And it turns out that Trump's first term wasn't as bad as everyone said it was going to be. And I think most importantly on this question of Trump, you know, nuking every country or getting us into a world war, it turns out that the exact opposite happened, which is that we actually brought some troops home under Trump or at least had plans to in Afghanistan. And then Biden turned around and actually did get us in involved in several <laughs> wars. So it really was the perfect compare and contrast of their foreign policy um, and really blew up, for lack of a better yeah. term, all of the claims that the neocons and the never Trumpers and the deranged progressive left were making about a potential Trump presidency. Yeah, I remember so many, you know, so-called national security experts who go on, uh, you know, cable news and would go on and talk about, yeah, the catastrophe. He'd have his fingers on the button. He could launch nukes at any time. And what they were really inveighing against was the fact that Donald Trump would sometimes articulate something approaching a non-interventionist foreign policy that so many Americans, frankly, on both the right and the left, intuitively believe in themselves. And, and, you know, I always go back to in 2008, Barack Obama and Ron Paul being, you know, a Democrat and a Republican being super popular for breaking with the idea that the Iraq war was good and the continued um, in, in, in investment in Afghanistan and everywhere else was good, drawing these massive crowds, drawing support because they were saying th something the American people already thought. And Trump, did that at times, although I would argue he still put in some people like John Bolton who were totally hostile to the actual non-interventionist uh, project, and there was still some of that permanent national security state running the country. That's continued under Biden, probably would continue again under Trump. But the idea that it was this this huge break from normalcy, I actually wish it had been more of a break from normalcy, right? Yeah, I completely agree. And even now, he's sort of toyed with the continuing of funding of Ukraine. He's backed Speaker Johnson's negotiations. Now what's going on with that? Oh, are, are, it, are MAGA people upset because... I am. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if I'm like a MAGA person, but, yeah. uh, but yes, I mean, I know some of them are, but a lot of them obviously don't articulate it. And uh, it's a departure, obviously, from some of the things that he said when he was in office in regards to Russia and potential conflict in that region and also just his broader foreign policy. But I think the the broader thing about his foreign policy that perhaps scared people before he took office was that rhetorically he was very unpredictable, which actually turned out to be a great strength because both enemies and allies never really knew 
when he was being serious about threatening to bomb North Korea or threatening to go after Russia or Iran. I think there was that sort of infamous tweet where he said that Iran better watch out because he'll, they'll see fire and fury, the likes of which they've never seen before. And then there were other times where he was literally negotiating with the Taliban and the Afghan government to try to have a drawdown of that war. So you have these sort of varying positions in, in different parts of the world where people really didn't know what to make of Trump. Sure. But then you have four years, right, of a demonstration that Russia did not invade Ukraine. Uh, Putin wasn't emboldened by Trump saying nice things occasionally about him in public. Well, the Middle North East seemed calm compared to what's going on right Middle now. The Middle East was relatively calm. North Korea did not launch missiles into Hawaii like yeah. we were constantly warned about in these CNN segments where they would send reporters to the bunkers and, and uh, test the alarm systems. Yeah. So, I mean, now there's a demonstrated track record at this point that that unpredictability, again, was actually a strength. Yeah, although I'm ready for him to be predictable in terms of what the foreign policy approach would actually be. And I think that the selling out of the base, and it's it's it bothers me when MAGA people will just like, you know, Trump can change his mind instantly or say something that totally contradicts what they thought his view was, and he doesn't get, he doesn't get enough, like even now, Mike Johnson is coming under attack. Um, by your Marjorie Taylor Greens and other people, but it's still, oh no, Trump's probably still with us. It's like I don't know, is that wishful thinking at some point? Um, but but you know, you got to contrast that with what we have had for the last four years under Joe Biden. Um, Bill Maher and uh, Seinfeld talking about you know how the dinner check, for instance, being seven hundred dollars. Well, that's because of inflation and the economic policies we've had for the last four years, which like everybody, even including a lot of Democrats, understand are just terrible. And so many people myself included, want to go back to, you know, the way things were for the economic environment, the environment for small businesses, um, the, 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 was the, the, the vibe of the country back before COVID came along and ruined everything. Yeah, can we get a vibe check? Let's get a, <laughs> let's get a vibe shift. Vibe shift back to 2018. What do you say? Well, we also have the border crisis, obviously, and there's an interesting facet of this happening in the campaign space right now where the Biden campaign has now released a new ad where they're attacking Trump for the so-called family separation policy, which I would argue is a is sort of like the don't say gay bill it's a euphemism used by political opponents that doesn't really describe what was happening there but you know barring getting into a deep dive explanation of what the policy actually was can you say gay on the border <laughs> well it depends <laughs> but you know um the the biden campaign released this ad going after him and it's like is that's the only part of trump's border policy that you could potentially pick apart to distract from the fact that yours has been so abysmal it's sort of like with bidenomics right like why would you create a space in the campaign for your opponent to then talk about everything bad you're doing on this issue, like they should be deflecting from the border and the economy as much as humanly possible. Yeah, but they can't because it's top of people, everybody's mind. Um, I noticed Trump going after, did you see this? Um, not going after, defending Henry uh, Cuellar, Democrat yes. now under indictment, um, f allegedly for corruption relating to Azerbaijan. And, uh, you know, the, the Republicans are putting out statements um, calling on House Democrats to hold them accountable in the same way they forced Republicans to hold George Santos accountable and all of that. And then in wades Trump saying this is a deep state <laughs> plot to go after a Democrat who is actually tough on the border. What is Trump's affection for Democrats who get thrown? And not he, that he's been convicted yet, but uh, same thing with like the Illinois governor, right? Rod uh, Blagojevich. That's right. Trump has some need to defend Democrats who land themselves in prison. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, he hasn't defended Menendez yet, I don't yeah. think. But I mean, I guess because Quaylar is sort of this like useful ally, like you said, on the border and on abortion issues, I think he's one of the only pro-life. The only one. The yeah. only pro-life Democrat. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess there's something to be said for a consistent standard <laughs> in Congress. Like Just whatever the FBI does, <laughs> I'm against it. That's the I mean, new Trump stamp. Uh, that's fine yeah. by me. It's I not mean, the I worst don't, stance. It's not the worst no. stance, but I mean, a consistent standard, right? Like either you're in Congress until you get convicted and then you get removed or you're in there or you get removed when you're just uh, accused of something. But yeah. right now we have it both ways and it's, uh, it's I mean, typical just pol political game gamesmanship. Yeah, indeed. All right, more free media right after this.